Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and today we're going to go on to part three of our little hack and slash tutorial. So, so far we've managed to create a, our player, an enemy for us to fight, and just a floor for us to stand on. We've gone ahead and created little health bars for ourselves and our enemy, and today we're going to go on to starting the enemy AI. So, let's go into scripts. We'll just right click create a new C sharp script and we'll just call it enemy AI then once that's done double click it to open up mono development and it'll give us our start and our update once mono development has opened up our new script let's go ahead and rename it to the name of our class enemy AI now you'll want to make sure that the class name is the same name that you gave the script in Unity. So now let's go on to think about exactly what we want our enemy AI to do right now. We're going to want our evil QB to be able to select a target, which is going to be us. We're going to want him to be able to rotate towards our target and also move towards our target. So let's start setting that up. We'll go back to model development and we'll start putting in the variables that we're going to need. First we're going to need a target. We're going to use the transform of our player for this. First we're going to create them all public just so we can watch them in the inspector but later on we should put them to private. But for now we'll go public, transform, target. Now this holds what he wants to charge at which is going to be us. We'll also want a public, integer, uh, we'll just call this one move speed and that's gonna tell the tell the object how fast you can move we'll also want a public integer rotation speed and that's gonna tell them how fast we want them to rotate now one of the little optimizations I like to put in right at the very beginning it's going to be in our wake function so we'll add that now it's important to note that awake is called before anything else in your script is going to be called. So if you want something to happen before anything else in your script, you can just add it to the awake. So let's go ahead and cache our transform. So we'll come up here, I'm going to leave a space, I'll do private, transform, and we're going to call it my transform. Then in the awake function, all we do is call my transform and assign it transform. Now what exactly is this doing? I know that I'm going to be calling our transform quite a bit in our update function to move things around, rotate, and every time we call the transform it has to go and look up to see what our transform is. Now if we take a look at our evil QB, this is the transform component right here. So instead of constantly looking up this transform, we're going to cache it into a variable called my transform, and it's, it makes things a lot faster. We, we don't have to keep looking it up. We just automatically have a reference to it, and that's why we do that. So the next thing we're going to want to do is be able to target the player. So first we're going to want to create a game object. We'll just call this geo, and it's going to be equal to game object dot find and we want to be able to find it with a tag so we have two here there's find game objects with tag and find game object with tag since we're ever only going to use the player tag once we'll just use this one here now we have to tell it what tag to look for the tag we're going to look for will be called player and let's look at the tagging system in unity well, you notice when you select your player, up here you have the tag uh, attribute. Now it may be set to untagged at first. If so, just select tag. Now what exactly is a tag? Uh, picture you had 20 guys running around in your scene. They could all be exactly identical, but you could assign different tags to them. So you could have just one be a player and the rest be whatever other tag there is. 
And if you wanted to find just the one with the player tag, uh, you could easily do it using the find out game object with tag. Now, if you wanted to add more tags, you can come down here and say add tag. And you open this here up. Let's create one. Let's call it uh, enemy. Because we're probably going to need that one a little later on anyway. So we just simply type in enemy, hit enter. Let's select our enemy QB. And when we go down here, we'll notice that there's an enemy tag now. Let's set it to enemy right away. So we'll have our player tag with the player and our enemy tag with enemy. The floor should be untagged as well as our light. So let's go back to our script. So we're going to get the game object that is tagged with player. Then we're going to want to assign its transform to our target variable. So we can simply just go target equals geo, which is the name of the game object that we're going to be storing uh, the game object with the player tag in, and just transform. So if we take our script, drag it onto our evil QB, let's select them, let's attach, let's expand it, and we'll notice here we have the movement speed set to zero, rotation speed to zero, and our target is none, but if we hit play, It should target. Uh, let me just take a look at the code again. Um, so, so we're assigning the game object, finding game object. Ah, I didn't save it. Let's try that again. So we select our evil QB. There we go. So let's unselect it and select it again so we can actually see a target. And we notice when it starts up, there we go. Okay, so we have it selecting a target. Now we're going to want it to actually move towards our player. And there's quite a few ways we can do this, but we're just going to do it in one of the simplest ways possible for now. So to start off with, let's just have the computer draw a line from our enemy to our player. So we can do debug.log Oh, sorry, not dot log, it's dot draw line. Now this takes two parameters. One would be the target that we want to have the line from. So target dot transform. I believe it takes a vector three, so we'll do position. Yeah, they take vector threes. And then our position, which is my transform dot position. So we'll save that off and when we start it up now we'll get a line through here. Let's actually change the color of that line a bit and just add a color property uh, if I spell it right. So we'll color and there's a bunch of colors already predefined so instead of creating a new one we're just going to pick one of the ones that are already defined and if you scroll down you can see all the different colors gray, green, uh, gray spelled differently. Let's just do a yellow line. So now when we start it up we'll have a yellow line from the enemy to our player. Since our target is a transform already we don't need to call the transform transform so we can get rid of that part and it should work just the same. And there's our line. All right. So next thing we're going to want to do is have it turn around and look at our player. So let's make a comment. Look. Uh, not mouse look. Comment. Look at target. Now the way we're actually going to do this is to rotate our cube to face our our player. So we'll be calling it rotation. So my transform dot rotation is equal to, now we're going to create a quaternion here, and we're also going to call it slurp. I'll get the phone and I'll be right back.